Hello everybody, my name is Matthew DePrez and I am the Church Engagement Specialist at an organization called the Fuller Youth Institute. We are a research division of Fuller Theological Seminary. I became a Christian when I was 18 years old and I immediately sensed a call to go into full-time pastoral ministry. So I headed off to college to become a pastor and to learn how to be a pastor. And I came home after my first year and I got plugged in with my church. And there was a leader there, he was the youth pastor, his name is Dave Rowe. And Dave Rowe came up and asked me a question that I'll never forget. He said, hey Matthew, you're home for the summer, do you want to speak at youth group sometime this summer? I thought to myself, I've never been asked to do this before. I can't believe he would ask me to do this, but sure, why not? So I put a little prep work in and, and, I, and I preached my first sermon. This was the name of my first sermon. Four reasons why you should read the Bible. I, I tried so hard to think of a fifth reason and I could not think of a fifth reason. And so I preached this sermon and it was a disaster. It was a total train wreck. And I know it was a disaster because students were falling asleep and their eyes were rolling back. It was just brutal. And I know for a fact that students went up to Dave Rowe afterwards and they said, don't ever let that guy speak again. So I'm fully expecting for him to come up to me and say, thanks, but I've lost my chance to speak again. And instead he comes up to me, gives me a huge hug. And he said, great job. When do you want to do it again? I was like, this guy will let me do this again. So he said, I want to work with you. Uh, on this. So let's take some time over the next few weeks, but I want you to speak again. And so he worked with me a little bit and I prepared and I came up with my second sermon that I preached at the youth group. It was called two ways to keep from being a judgmental person. I, I tried to think of a third way, but I could not think of a third thing. So I preached this sermon and it was a disaster again. It was a total train wreck. And I know for a fact, again, people were like, don't ever let that guy speak again. And instead Dave Rowe comes up to me, gives me a huge hug. He says, great job. When do you want to do it again? Now, this was nearly 20 years ago. And today, I cannot imagine my life not being able to preach the gospel. I can't imagine my life not being able to communicate about Jesus to people. And it's because he gave me a leadership opportunity. He believed in me and he worked with me and mentored me. And, and I would argue that the reason why we have leadership opportunities that we have in the church is because somebody believed in us and they gave us a leadership opportunity. Uh, we did research with 1,300 people looking at why young people love attending their church. And we couldn't deny the fact that when we asked young people, why are you involved? 75% of young people pointed towards leadership of some sort that they were given keys of leadership. We refer to it as keychain leadership, but they were given keys of leadership in their church. They mattered. Their role mattered in the church. And so I would wonder what would happen if we gave keychain leadership opportunities to the young people in our church. So a couple of thoughts about this. One, I know for a fact that Dave Rowe, he took some hits for me. He used up some social capital maybe that he had been saving for a little while and he had to spend some social capital on me because he believed in me. And I wonder how many of us, sometimes we don't give keychain leadership opportunities to young people because we're not willing to take the hits or use up our social capital on young people. Another thought about this is that some of you might be asking, well, are you just suggesting we should just give away keys of leadership just willy nilly without even thinking? And we would say, no. We think that keychain leadership is about a slow matriculation. It's similar to learning how to drive a car. Uh, when you learned how to drive a car, you didn't learn how to drive a car in the middle of a blizzard, in the middle of rush hour. No, you learned how to drive a car uh, by being on a, in a parking lot with no other cars around, no other light poles around. And then eventually it built up to a back road and then a main road and then a main road with traffic and then a main road with traffic in a blizzard. There was a slow matriculation that went on. And I think uh, for us, it's important with young people that we have a slow matriculation and we don't put them in too high stakes in environment too quickly because maybe they will fail and it will scare them from leading in the future. Or maybe the stakes are so high that we're not willing to give back the key of leadership. Instead, we become what we refer to as key hoarders. And so how can we give away keychain leadership opportunities. So we would say, maybe create a young leader inventory. Maybe get a group of people at your church who have social capital and start thinking through names. Maybe it could be, uh, it could be Billy. Maybe it would be uh, Susie. Maybe it would be 
my name, maybe it's Matthew, but actually write down names. Maybe have those leaders write down five young people who could serve and then start thinking about opportunities, ways that they can actually serve. Maybe they are greeters. Maybe they'll greet people at the front door. Seems simple enough. Maybe they're ushers. Maybe they can help with <gasps> the offering. Can you imagine if we let young people collect the offering, right? Maybe it's prayer during service. Maybe it's scripture reading during service. M maybe we're having young people actually preach. Uh, another thought would be maybe we have young people uh, and we invite young people on our consistory. And I know that sometimes we, uh, we keep the consistory spots for the older adults in our churches. You know, we, we literally say that spot is for the elders. But this, what we're finding at the Fuller Youth Institute is a great way to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with an older adult and a younger person who can serve. But we want to take the young people that we have on our ministries and place them in opportunities so that they can serve. And I think what we'll find is that if an adult can serve in one area, then a student can also serve in that area. And so we've been asking the question at the Fuller Youth Institute, what if every single church provided keychain leadership opportunities so that young people knew that they could be involved, they could be invested in, and they can thrive in their faith for the rest of their lives?